Ciao, ladies and gentlemen. This is Cullen Gandy coming at you with another video about mortgage finance, personal finance, and just anything financial to get you down the road to where you want to be. Today, I want to talk about a very specific topic if you are trying to qualify to buy a home with self-employed income. And this is something that's really important for mortgage loan officers to know as well when you're trying to help qualify your borrowers uh, who are working on self-employed income. As well, it's important because there's another side to it where sometimes you kind of have to be a detective and figure out if they are actually self-employed or if they're trying to trick you. But first, if you like education-based and informative content like this, please go ahead and leave me a like on this video and go ahead and think about subscribing as well. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm immensely. Also, if you have any questions that you want me to address in future videos, please don't hesitate to leave those in the comments below. So I'm gonna tell you a story, and it's a tale as old as time. So you're a mortgage loan originator, and you're just calling folks, you're taking inbound leads, you're scrambling over to the Starbucks to try to drum up business, and you find one what seems to be really well-qualified borrower. They fill out the application, they seem to have really good debt to income ratios and really, really solid income from what they have been representing to you. You give all of the disclosures up front, uh, you get them into underwriting, and it's easy breezy, it's, it's a money in the bank, right? Well, underwriting comes back to you and they say, actually, you know, it looks like this person is self-employed. They own the company or they own some major part of the company, and as a result, we have to qualify them as self-employed. Okay, no big, it's kind of a bit of a stumble, right? So you get back with your borrower. You say, hey, look, it looks like you are actually self-employed. We're gonna need uh, two years of personal and business bank statements, as well as two years and a year to date of profit and loss statements from the company. The borrower is really, really responsive. They send you all the documents you need within a day. You open up the profit and loss statements expecting to see basically what they've represented to you is what they're getting paid. Suddenly you open up the profit and loss statements and oh my God, there's a giant loss. <laughs> It's just a huge loss on the company's profit and loss spreadsheet there. And not only is there a big loss for last year's profit and loss statement, but this year's year-to-date statement somehow is even worse and the year isn't even over. You've just gone from getting a borrower who's representing that they were a W-2 employee all the way to a self-employed borrower who does no longer qualify based on their profit and loss statements. What happened here? But to recap on what happened, if you own your own business, obviously you're self-employed, right? But if you pay yourself as a W-2 employee, you are still counted as being self-employed if you own 25% or more of a business in equity. You're not gonna fool anybody by telling us that you're a W-2 employee because the underwriting group will find out we will have to qualify you as a self-employed borrower and it could be a problem. What do you do? Well, from the perspective of the consumer, this is what you need to be doing. If you are a self-employed borrower, and believe me, I have been one for the majority of my life, it is really a very attractive scenario to claim large losses on your company's balance sheet to avoid taxation in the short term. Believe me, I get it. Nobody likes dishing money away to the government when they could keep it for themselves and just claim a loss. However, when you are trying to qualify for a mortgage, and this goes for anybody, whether you're just a sole proprietor to somebody who owns a large S corporation, if the balance sheet of the company does not look healthy, if they're showing great losses, then those are going to reflect on your ability to qualify as well. You see, from the perspective of a mortgage lender, the income of the business is directly tied to the income of the individual who holds a large stake in that business. Not only does your personal income and tax verification documentation matter, but also that of the businesses as well. So keep this in mind when you're filling out your taxes. Hey, I know people have deductions that they need to make for business, but if you don't need to make it or if you can depreciate some of the assets that you seem to be claiming uh, on the taxes might be a better route to go when you're trying to qualify for a mortgage. Now I'm going to be talking to the mortgage loan originator. This has to be something that you are addressing on the very first call with your borrowers. You need to be asking the whole gamut 
of what they are looking for in the transaction, whether that be a purchase, refinance, or cash out, or uh, it could be like a revolving HELOC. But the really important stuff is verifying how we're gonna be qualifying that and relaying that to your processing staff. Once you get all of the details about what your client is looking for and perhaps uh, what they might be qualified for, you need to ask, hey, are you guys self-employed, employed, or retired? Because if you're employed or retired, that's really easily verifiable income. However, if they are self-employed, they are going to have a whole nother set of things that they're going to have to provide for you, such as two years business and personal tax returns. As well, they're going to need last year's profit and loss statement from their company and this year's year-to-date profit and loss statement for that company. And the very big distinction that you need to be doing in order to avoid losing out on a deal, I'm not saying that this is directly pertinent to me or that this just happened to me yesterday. But if you don't ask them if they own 25% or more, even though they are representing that they are paid as a W-2 employee, then this could drum up a little bit of trouble down the line with underwriting when they find out that, hey, yeah, he's an employee, but he's listed as the president of the company, which is a really important employee when it comes to the business. I mean, if you're qualifying a borrower and his name is Johnny Toyota, and he said that he's an employee of the Toyota Corporation, and you look on the balance sheet there and it says that he's chief executive officer of Toyota W2 employee somehow, I don't know. Maybe that should drum up a few red flags. So both of you guys, the clients and the originators, save yourself a lot of heartache and a lot of time wasted by just getting these things out of the way early so that you know how you need to qualify somebody and how you might need to qualify yourself. Get all of this out of the way early on so that you can capitalize on some of the best rates that people have ever seen in the entire history of the United States right now. Uh, and save yourself a lot of heartache and a lot of wasted time just by checking in on these few little things so that you know how you need to qualify and how you might need to qualify somebody if you're their advisor. And that's it guys. I hope you got a lot of value out of this and I hope that this saves you a lot of time. If you enjoyed this content, again, please leave me that like. It helps so, so much with the YouTube algorithm as well. Leave a comment. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know what you're up to in the industry and if you have any questions you want me to answer as well. Hit that subscribe button because I want you to be on this journey with me and the notification bell because I, I just want to notify you of all of this, this value that I have inside, you know. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you're having a great week and I look forward to seeing you soon. Hopefully, down the line, we'll be a little bit richer and a little bit happier. Peace.